right, here we go. Welcome, 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 welcome everyone to Upscale Love for You. This is your host, your favorite first cousin, Bobby G, and I'm coming to you live again from Jacksonville, Florida. And we want to thank you for joining us this evening. And we want to welcome you to the first show for 2022 to Upscale Love for You. Thank everyone for the text messages, the phone calls, and the emails that we have been receiving about Upscale Love for You. And the number one question we have been asked is, what is it all about? Upscale Love for You is formatted to entertain, educate, and facilitate self-help, self-love, and everything you want to wish to know about love, relationships, dating, marriage, etc. Upscale Love for You it often uncovers hot topics and sensitive issues from tales of singledom to parenting struggles and everything in between. So whether you're actively seeking direction or looking for ways to pass the time or just looking for a good conversation, Upscale Love for You is here. And now with that being said, I would like to introduce the people that have made this possible. The one, the only, the founder, the creator, the lovely, the vivacious, Dr. Fabulous. Come on and talk to us. Good evening, everyone, and happy new year. Happy 2022. This year, we're looking for wonderful things to happen, and we're going to explore higher heights. So I thank each and every one of you for coming on this evening, and we're going to have a wonderful time on our very first show in the year of 2022. Back to you, First Cousin. All right, Dr. Fabulous, thank you so much. And I'm going to tell you something. That hair and that earring look real good right now. You're looking real. I like how you're shaking that thing now. You got a new attitude <laughs> for 2022. All right. Next, okay. I'm going to introduce my my main man, my brother from another mother with the voice like no other, Dr. Feelgood. Come on and talk to us. You're muted. We can't hear you. I got to be smarter than the equipment. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Feelgood, the man with the silky voice, the lady's choice. And if I was a car, I'd be a Maserati. Cause I got the body and I'm a hottie. So, um, couple of couple of housekeeping things we got to do before we start this show is going to be a good one. I ask that you raise your hands um, before you come on, and if you want to speak, we ask that you that you cam up. If you can't, you can speak, but you won't be seen on the screen. Um, this is so that we can have a smoother show, smoother transitions, and that we could we be able to get full participation, and we won't have to call call anybody out. That was one of the that was one of the critiques, and we we work best when we work for you. We're here, we're here for you. So we we are we listen to our people, and we want to make sure you our family. So we want to make sure that you taken care of. Back to you, first guns. All right, Dr. Feelgood, thank you for that. And just what Dr. Fe uh, Feelgood just said, if you can, we're asking that you either uh, have a picture uh, up. As, as your avatar, so we can see who we're having a conversation with. And if you have a question, we're asking that you please raise your hand. We are receiving the feedback that we um, have from the previous weeks, and we're trying to make the show run a little bit smoother. We don't want to put anyone on the spot, and we want you to actively participate. But if you raise your hand, then it wouldn't seem like I'm calling you out or anything like that. Also, please look in the chat box because that's an opportunity to look at the email, upscale love, the number four, the letter U at gmail.com. That's the upscale love for you at gmail.com. And also go to YouTube. Check us out on YouTube. Upscale love for you. All one word. Upscale love for you. It's all one word. Go to YouTube. Check us out. And please hit that subscribe button. And with that being said, uh, the first take uh, order of business is what is your favorite non-sex activity that you would love to do with your partner? What is your favorite non-sexual activity that you would like to do with your partner? Dr. Fabulous, I'm going to start with you. What is Ooh, your favorite? See, listen, listen, listen. I love to do everything with my partner, but I love to travel. I love, especially I love to shop. Oh, my God. If he just take me on that fantasy, fantasy shopping. Oh my God, I'm just losing my mind. So I'm going to say travel, um, the theater, and shopping. Those would be my three things that I enjoy doing with him. Okay. Okay. Now, does those those three things, do they equate to love to you? Do they? Of course. <laughs> Stop. I said no. <laughs> so if he, if he could take you doing those three things, then, then, then it's love then. No. Well... Uh, somewhat because whoever I deal with, they already know I'm over the top and 
I'm a whole <laughs> enchilada. A whole I'm enchilada. A, okay. I'm a whole enchilada. <laughs> so they already know when they start out with me. Because okay. I don't hide, I don't play no games. This is what you get, and this is what it is, and that's that. But I I think that's part of our love thing, traveling, yeah. okay. Shop, okay. all okay. that good stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, with everything that's going on in the world today, traveling can be uh, quite challenging at this point in time, so you may have to switch that up a little bit. I see we got a hand raised. Uh, Mr. Anson, come on and talk to me. What is your favorite non-sexual activity you love to do with your partner? Well, I'm a little removed from relationship, but <laughs> I would say cooking. Cooking ah. can be fun. Okay. Okay. That's it? And afterwards, yeah, and afterwards I have dessert. Okay. Okay. That's your favorite huh. non-sexual activity to do with your partner is cooking. Okay. What's, it, what's been your favorite <clears throat> meal? Uh, I mean, my favorite food is crab legs, but, you know, uh, I guess anything that's that that can make you full, you know, like I don't know, spaghetti or something. No, no, spaghetti. Too easy. Uh, I don't know. But just cooking something, whatever. Okay. We, whatever we feel like eating. Okay. All right. Whatever you're in the mood for. Okay, Miss Andreen. Is it Andreen Brian? I'll make sure I say your first name right, Miss Brian. I'm just calling Miss Brian. Miss Brian, you got your hand raised. Come on and talk to me. All right, we're gonna come back to her. Veronica, you have your hand raised. Come on and talk to me. What is your favorite non-sexual activity that you like to do with your partner? Bob, Bobby, um, Andrine just came on. She came on? Yeah. Uh, okay, can I answer or you, you yeah, can talk? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, probably I would say going out to eat, um, exploring like museums, theaters, mm -hmm. stuff like that, movies. Okay. When the last time, Ms. Brown, when the last time you've been to the movie? And what did you see? Oh, man, that's a good question. Well, the last time I've been to the movies, I, because of COVID, I haven't, but I watch at home. So I now I count Netflix and as the movies. So probably like The Harder They Fall or something on okay. Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Which was an excellent movie. For those of you who have not seen The Harder They Fall, it's an excellent, excellent, excellent movie about the West stories of African-American cowboys who were the original cowboys. A very good, very good movie. Uh, looks like Miss Veronica, you have your hand raised. Come on and talk to us. What's your favorite non-sexual activity that you like to do with your partner? I would say working out, going to the gym, walking, um, that type of thing. I enjoy that with my partner. Okay, is that it? For now. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's it for now. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, Noah, if we're going to ask that you raise your hand if you want to respond to the question. The question is, what is your favorite non-sexual activity that you like doing with your partner? We ask that you please raise your hand so I can go ahead and call on you. Well, I'm going to come back in because you said something to me, Bobby, about travel. But when mm -hmm. when your friend have their own jet and their own yacht, ha -ha, nothing is un impossible. Well, with, with Dr. Fowler, so now, first of all, whoa, whoa, own jet and own yacht? Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, okay. Come on so, now. Okay. So, so we need to hook up with you so we can so get with traveling, your friend. Traveling is really not an issue. I'm coming through on 2022. 2022 mm. is your year, huh? That's my year. Okay, well, guess what? I'm right there with you. I'm, hey, I'm your, I'm your, your escort, your bodyguard. Okay. All right, Miss Chevelle Dallas, come on and talk to me. How are you this evening? Oh, I'm sorry, I was muted. But um, hey, how's everybody doing? All is um, well. Good. Uh, we like to play board games <coughs> and like Uno, Twenty One, Connect Four, just things like that. Okay, okay, Miss Dallas, are you a card player? I know you said Uno, but you play cards. I play spades. Okay. I'm going to ask you again, Ms. Dallas. My kind cards? of girl. My kind yes. of girl. Yes. <laughs> yes, I play cards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's trying to, make... to get you to say bid with. Well, you that's, know, that's... somebody's supposed to teach me how to play that. I don't know how to play that one. Girl, that's okay. kind of difficult. <clears throat> I've been well, in training. If you can play spades, you can play bid with. Huh? Change... If you can play spades, you can play bid with. That's what they tell me. Okay. Yeah, it's the okay. same game. 
Okay. So we all, we all got to make some arrangements where we can all get together and have a bid whist party and show you how it's done. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. For anyone else who want to respond to the question, the question is, what is your favorite non-sexual activity that you like doing with your partner? I'm surprised no one has said just snuggling, snuggling and cuddling that, up. That, that's me. Good. That, that's me. That's, that's you? That's me. I'm, I'm a snuggler. I'm a, I'm a cuddler. I'm a hugger. Um, not, not I'm going to have to call you out. Hold on for a second. I'm going to have to call you out. You seem more like a hit it and quit it kind of guy. You don't seem like you're, nah, you're, you're, I like, you're I like snuggled snuggle. out. I like the, really. <laughs> look, I like, I like to feel the body person, body of the person <clears throat> that I'm with. You know, when, okay. I'm, when I'm doing my thing, I want to be next to, you know, feeling that nice, warm body, just breathing. Sometimes I, you know, we fall asleep like that, wake up like that. Just, um, I also I like I just like having decent, in depth conversations. Just mm. not not the surface stuff. Talk about sports, sex, and politics, but I like to talk about different things to make okay. everything you know everything go <clears throat> the way way it needs to, and how we can build and be closer to each other. In a, mm -hmm. in a deeper way, because you have to be able to relate in order to have a relationship. That's true. That's true. If you can't relate to the person, why would I want to be with somebody I don't want to touch? Why do I want to be somebody I don't want to talk to? I can I could go out and hang with the boys, but I don't want to touch somebody and just talk to them about sports, yeah. sex, and and politics. <laughs> <laughs> excellent point. Excellent point. Miss Chevelle, you have your hand raised. You you want to respond to that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to take it down. Okay, okay. We okay. Asked that. okay, okay. If you want to res respond, we're asking that you please raise your hand so we can call on you. We don't want to point anyone out or make anyone feel uncomfortable by just calling your name. So the question on the table is, what is your favorite non-sexual activity like that you like to do with your partner? We got a lot of people logging in also, so I'm going to go ahead and break protocol here, and I'm going to call on somebody. Miss um, Nick, Miss Nikki Johnson, you with us? Yes, I am. Come on and talk to me, darling. How are you doing tonight? I'm fine. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Come on and talk to me. I like a man. Uh, I like to be with my partner that loves to talk about the future. Talk about the future? Okay. Yeah. Talk to me. Well, if we're going to see where the relationship's going to be going, um, feeling them out, having a, a good conversation talking about um, what they want out of their lives mm -hmm. and see if it's similar to what I'm trying to go through it with, with my life. Okay. 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 So, and I guess the best time of day to do that is, you know, right there when you're very intimate with each other without having a sexual experience and, get, and having that closeness and making those decisions. I think that's pretty good. Exactly. All right. Mr. Malik. Come on and talk to me. Hey, what's going on, fam? Um, everything is lovely. Everything is lovely. Uh, how's everybody doing? Hey, everybody's doing, doing live. Right. It's doing 2022. Right. We're trying to keep this ball rolling. And we want to know, what's your favorite thing you like to do that's non-sexual with your partner? Holding hands, walking in the rain with an umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> you know, going, going, going down on River Street. You know what I mean? Getting Ain't some. That uh, a song? Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a Forrest Jones song, man. Song. <laughs> hey, hey, man. He said that a song. Uh, looking, looking, holding hands, going on River Street, and um, looking at the boats and the ships, and also gazing at the stars. You know, because you always remember, you can't see a star in the daylight, so stars come out at night. So we're gonna do it like that. <laughs> okay. 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 All right, well, we're going we're gonna to shift gears. We're going to shift gears for a minute. And this question is directed to all the women on the panel tonight. It's directed to all the women. And I'm going to start with Dr. Fabulous. How important is it for a man to manscape? How important is it for a man to be clean in certain areas? Well, well, well. Now, I like it trimmed. I like it. You know, cut, manicured, just like my lawn. But I don't care how well it's cut. 
it's got to smell good too. I mean, the fragrance, the aroma got to be right. So be right. I like it manscaped. And of course, I want it to smell good as well because it can be manscaped all at once. But if it has a little funk appeal to it, that's not what I'm looking for. You done stole part of my question, girl. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you. We, what is that? I don't want the funk appeal at all. Okay, so is that is that is that so, so you're saying that's a turn off to you? Oh, very much so. I don't like a man with bad breath, bad armpits, or a bad smell elsewhere. So right. that's not even in the race for Dr. Fab. Okay, all right. Yeah. Miss Miss Savelle, come on and talk to me. How important is it for a man to manscape? A manscape, you mean as far as like explain that to me. Man, to manscape, manscape is a it's a spinoff of landscape, meaning to keep the 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 the, the keep regional the trimmed. trimmed. Yeah, keep it, keep it trimmed. trimmed. Yeah, keep it trimmed up. Keep it trimmed. Go porn star, make it bald. You know, we don't do <laughs> landing strips. Ooh, we may uh, do highways, but not landing strips. <laughs> I mean, long as it's not smelly, like she said. I don't think I would be to I, that part wouldn't you know, long as he's clean mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have a problem with the manscaping or not. Okay. Long, yeah, long, I'm a, long as it's clean because he could not be man uh, uh, clean down there, just have a, a, a bush but it'd be clean. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean okay. You, carry, you carry dental flaws don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> I'm just yeah. down there a lot. Just so. <laughs> so wow, Miss Patricia, I know you're driving, darling. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Come I on and talk to me. How important is it for a man to manscape? Um, I'm gonna go with the ladies. It's not that important that it's manscaped. It's, it's more important that it's clean and it smells good. Okay. All right. All right. But I do. I I do like a clean landing. I, I really prefer <laughs> that. But, uh, you know, if it's, it's okay if there's something there as long as it doesn't smell bad. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Cousin Carla, are you on? Hi. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Come on and talk to me. How important is it for a man to manscape? Um, I'm I'm gonna go with the ladies once again. Um, it's not that important as much as the um smell. I, I okay. think really it doesn't matter to me as long as it's clean and smells good. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, we're gonna shift gears again. Uh, Miss Nikki, are you with us? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me ask you a question. What is your favorite time of day to be intimate, and why? Mm, nighttime. Best nighttime. way to sleep. Nighttime. Nighttime? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Is that uh, Dr. Don Dobson? Are you with us? Yes. 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 Good evening, Dr. Dobson. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? All right. Where are you from, Ms. Dobson? I am currently residing in Queens, New York. All right. Well, thank you so much for logging on and checking us out at Upscale Love for You. We are a format that has been created where people can come on and just have open conversation about various topics. And mm -hmm. as you can see, the topics can range from a multitude of things. So we just want to ask the question, what is your favorite time of day to be intimate? Well, for me, I think it depends on how a person defines intimacy. Okay. So if I define intimacy, if I define intimacy as connecting with the person that I'm with, then any time is the most appropriate time. Ah, anytime. Right? Okay. Anytime. Okay. I like that. I like that. That's okay. Good. We're gonna ask also <laughs> that if you want to respond to the question, we're trying to switch the format up a little bit. We ask that you raise your hand, go into your chat box, or go to your um, settings and raise your hand if you want to respond to the question. We don't want to call on anyone in particular to make them feel uncomfortable. So I'm going to shift gears and go to Mr. Anson. 
Anson, what is your favorite time of day to be intimate? I will have to piggyback on the last answer and say anytime. Anytime. Anytime of day. Anytime of day. Three o'clock in the afternoon, afternoon is perfectly fine. First thing in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon. It don't matter. It don't matter. Whenever, whenever the feeling arises, I'm ready. Okay. All right. All right. We appreciate that you checking in, Miss Von Trees. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you this evening? I'm well. How are you, everybody? All right. Thank you so much for logging on. Thank you so much for logging on at Upscale Love for you. We do appreciate you coming on. And the question on the table is, what is your favorite time of day to become intimate? Favorite time of day to what? To being intimate. Oh. With your I'm partner. Early in the morning, like early, early, before work. Before work. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a good time to get it in. Yeah. That'll give yep. you a little energy. That'll Maybe. give you a boost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Feelgood, come on and talk to me. Well, everyone said any time is the right time, but if I'm going to really tell the truth, I like that early morning sunrise kind of shake okay. them up, send them okay. off to work happy, give them a little breakfast. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, All right, realistically, then. with me, yeah. as as I got older, it, it's, it got more to how I'm feeling. Sometimes, sometimes it's good to go at night. Sometimes I wake up in the morning, like Dr. Fab said, want to want a quick snack, a quick, a quick eat, a quick beat and hit my feet and get on my feet. Um, but evening time to night time is the best time because, you know, I'm getting up there where 10 o'clock is a new 2 a.m. So evening, early evening, because if you want if you ain't if you feeling romantic at 12 at midnight. You might not get none. <laughs> at what time? I said midnight. Oh, because so you, you might not get none. I might be, I might be three sheets to the wind, snoring in your ear. Gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. Okay, is this uh, Miss uh, Brit Brat? Brit Brat, yes. with us? Go ahead. Brit Brat. <clears throat> Okay, we're gonna go to Mr. Is it, is it Zakaya Washington? Mm -hmm. All yes, right. that's my neighbor. Her name is Zakia Washington. Zakia Washington. Marlena, how are you, darling? I am doing fantastic. <laughs> it's so good seeing. It's so good seeing you again. You as well. Yeah, everybody, well, Zakia, everybody. Yes, yes. Come on and talk to us real quick. Tell me, what is your favorite time of day to become intimate? No time. <laughs> Spoken like a true mother. <laughs> but okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. I like. I don't have a time. It's whenever. <laughs> it's whenever. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Whatever makes you feel good, Doctor Fowler. This is on you, <laughs> darling. I'm gonna pass the mic to you. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone, and once again, welcome, welcome to our very first show in the year 2022. And like I said, this evening, we're going to really talk about intimacy in the relationship. And as we know, int intimacy is the closeness <coughs> of people in their personal relationship. And what builds over time as you connect with someone, you grow, you grow to care for one another. And it's just certain things that you can do with your partner when you would say that you're being intimate. OK, it can include being physical or emotional closeness. It's just a mix up of the two. So tonight we're going to talk about that intimacy of the relationship. And of course, with a relationship. We think that a relationship, you should be romantic or have sexual involvement with that person if you're going to say, quote unquote, you're in a relationship. So ladies and gentlemen, the very first question is, who desires sex more, men or women? Me. Okay, raise your hand. Tell me, tell me, somebody tell me. Who desires sex more, men or women? Do I have anybody that want to share their thoughts about this? Yeah, good evening, uh, Dr. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. 
I think um, through my you know, trials and tribulations and, and, you know, that women like it just as much as we do. They just don't like to uh, have this persona that they're, you know, they don't want to be like men are labeled. Dr. Phil can verify, you know, possibly this. They, they already put this stigma over men that we're dogs. That's all we like heathen. We just like, uh, uh, uh. but women, I learned throughout the years, they like it just as much as we do. They're just more reserved, a key word, reserved about it, but they, they enjoy it just as much as we do. Okay, well, we're saying enjoyment, but you're telling me that women like it more. Or does men like it more? That's the question. Does men like it more than women, or do you think that women like it more? We both like it adequately, I guess, on an equal totem pole, but okay. overall, oh who do you God. think and who wants it more, who likes it more? Well, it was it would definitely be the male. The uh, male. Based on our chromosome that, I mean, it's like we're, we're just kind of the creator created a, us like that to be, you know, for you to procreate and we have to have the seed to be planted in you to make it germinate, to make it happen. So we we got that in us, that just that the estrogen that makes us want to want that like that. So it'd be the male for me. Okay. So I see Anson, you took your hand down, Anson. Was that before or you want to answer that now, Anson? <laughs> I'll go ahead and answer it now. I was going to wait to see what everybody said first. Okay. But, um, I think women do. I think, think women I think women desire it more than men because simply enough, women have the option to accept or deny and men have to go out and get. So men will, men get the person, get, get, get labeled as always wanting to have sex because they always have to go after it. For women to sit back and accept or deny, you know, every single day. But okay. in my experience, <clears throat> women that I've been with, they want more than me. All right. Well, you're saying it's the women. Okay. Is there a woman that would like to answer this for Dr. Fabulous? Anyone? Jump right Dr. on Fabulous, in. I can't. I can't raise my hand because I don't know how to do that. Well, in the go car. ahead. Go ahead and <laughs> tell me. Go on and tell me what you want to tell. But I think it just depends. Like I, I, I think it really depends on the person. It depends on the person you're with. It just depends on so many things. I, I think you're looking for a generalization that I don't think we can make here. Okay. Because, you know, I, I may want it more than my mate or, you know, at, at some points, you know, when we go back to that intimacy, you know, women use sex to get love, whereas men use love to get sex. So it depends on what, you know, what we're looking for. Oh, that was deep. I like how you yeah. get that to us one more time. You say men <laughs> use, give it to me women, one more time. Women use love. Men use love to get sex, and women use sex to get love. Gotcha. All right, oh. now. That's something to think about. Okay, is there anyone else on the panel this evening that would like to answer that for me? Anyone? Okay, well, Dr. Feelgood, take it over and tell me. Your good perspective is that it all depends. Sometimes women can't keep their hands off you. It depends on the time of month, the, cir the circumstances, and, and maybe a little alcoholic assistance. <laughs> Men think about sex alcoholic probably more. Men probably think about sex more, but um, as a woman, I notice as a woman got gets more mature and realizes that she's putting she's she's putting all that youthful nonsense out the side that she knows what she wants. She's gonna get what she wants. And maybe with one guy, and that's cool. But she knows that if she can, if she can um, feel safe with that guy, he in trouble because she's gonna be on him, like stink on crap. Going back to the going back to the manscaping part, <laughs> <laughs> like stink on crap. Wow, that was real poetic, Doctor Feelgood. Now I have is it Adrian Bryan with your hand yeah. out. Okay, go ahead. Um, I think I was kind of pick a piggyback on the 
the men for love, whatever she said, which was a really good statement. And I actually think men probably want it more initially, but I think depending on the relationship, once things progress, because I think then women might want it more. I mean, I don't know. I feel like it starts off where, because men are visual creatures, like going back to what she said, like with the love for sex and sex for love, depending on if you're a man or a woman, I think men want it more, but then I feel like once a woman is comfortable or whatever, she'll, it, there'll become a time where she might want it more. So she'll handle the ball. She'll take over and do the doggone thing. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Okay. Is there anyone else here that would like to answer that question before I move on? Okay. Uh, Y'all like to add to that. Um, okay. Uh, like I said earlier, the men have the, the, the duties to try to go get it. And women can sit back and accept or deny. But I believe that women get concerned with being called something if they continue to uh, go by their desires, you know? Because a female, a female friend of mine told me recently that they don't want to be called the hoe. I'm like, okay, you don't want to be called the hoe. Go get what you want, you know? But okay. no, 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 because then, uh, then I'm going to be considered a hoe. But I think that's more so the reason why women claim they don't want it as much as men do, because they don't want to be called a hoe. So you, what you're saying is that women really want it, but because they will be labeled a certain thing. But see, I think that that might be an issue with them being discreet about what they want and how they get it. So right. labels will not have to even come about because everybody don't have to know what Mrs. Jones is doing. You understand? She just has to know thing. how to, you know. And sometimes it's also the dude that she's dealing with. If she's dealing with um, a guy can't hold water, you know, she may be discreet, but she got to make sure the dude got something to lose by her doing that because right. people with nothing to lose run their mouth. Hello. Right. And, you know, women, I know women enjoy intimacy in that, in that fashion. They just, you know, like, like Anson said, they don't want people to tell them you are 304. If y'all know what 304 is, Google it, it's <laughs> urban, it's on an urban thing. But if she's well, a 304, like what does that make the man? I don't know what the 304 is. The old beeper, <laughs> old beeper code, flip 304 upside down. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I ain't want to mess up the algorithm, you know. I'm trying, we're trying to, we're trying to make money off this eventually. Oh, I got you. Got you. So, <laughs> the the idea is, you know, we as we as men have got to, you know, I don't care how good the the um, we got you. the velvet the velvet back the velvet room is. Mm -hmm. you don't go tell everybody gotcha you don't go tell everybody because you know you might want to go to a swingers club people in the swingers club don't be telling everybody in the swingers club mm -hmm. people right. you know yeah, very discreet right <clears throat> mr phil so you gotta no, you gotta no. learn <laughs> you gotta learn and discern who you who you open your gates to gotcha. because you might be a i'm just a person with discretion but dude might be a do might be a blood out of her mouth. <laughs> all right. Ralph Cramden. Okay. That's all so, I got. Is there <laughs> anyone else? Uh, this is the last call. It's like the last call for alcohol. Ronnie, go ahead. Give me your answer. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I just want to respond to Anson um, when he said that um, women don't want to be labeled hoes, but this was like my anthem to song with Luda. Um, the men, they want a lady in the street and a freak in the bed. And that's the honest to goodness truth. Let's call Girl, it. You say that was your anthem. You that was go my anthem. I mean, okay, I like the beat. I, was, <laughs> I like the beat. I like the lyrics, though. But that, that's really what they want. I mean, and um, we, as women, I mean, we flaunt it. We give it to them all the time. You know, the look. There's um, For me, there's no level of... Um, I don't want to say, I don't want to say normal. Everything is out there. 
everything is out there. Um, what? That's the little feedback. Somebody is giving us feedback. Okay, I think that took care of it. Okay, okay. but yeah, I mean, there. I mean, men are visual creatures. They may think it. They may want it. Um, but not all the time do they want it. Sometimes they just want to look. And that's one thing that when I am dating, I, I always, you know, that big butt come around, that voluptuous, beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. I want my man, to, you know, I don't want him to be like Googling her, but, you know, just, you know, you want to look, take a look because I'm looking too. Ooh. And the other part, <laughs> yeah, for real, I mean, but doesn't mean anything because I'm with you at the end of the day. I'm mm. all along with you. But, and to answer the first part of your question, uh, Dr. Fabulous, here's my thoughts. I think it depends on the person that you are with. Um, it depends on both of the individuals because we women, we want it as much as men. And when you have that level of intimacy, trust, and you're just that deep in a relationship, you want it all the time, morning, day, night, whatever. Just And not just the times, the places too make a difference. You know, we're, we, we don't want to be just monotonous all the time in the bedroom. So, you know, hey, we're in the kitchen yes, cooking, you know, drop it like it's hot. Let, you know, let's do this thing. And then we turn the stove back on. That's just uh, okay. She said, turn the stove back on. Yes, all they're right. cooking. They're cooking. They're you're cooking together. All right. So, listen, <laughs> we talked about who enjoys sex more, the male or the female. Now, <clears throat> This is another question for you people. Who enjoys, mm, listen to it good, who enjoys self-pleasuring more, men or women? And I'm going to take that right on over to Mr. Malik, straight out the hat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, um, <clears throat> well, Dr. Fabulous, to be honest, I do. You know, um, because once it's over, it's over. No hugging, no kissing, no cuddling. It's over. It's a done deal. Um, so, and then I think a man kind of know how he want to be, the feeling that he wants. So he knows <clears throat> how to get that feeling. And that was one thing that was always said about women, uh, on women on women. Men, we do like to look at porn, but when we look at women on women, I learn from them because I look at how they operate and do what they do, and I take pointers. So um, women know how another woman feels because why? They are a woman. So, but going back to the question, I like it myself because um, I enjoy it, but only one thing about it that's kind of risky, Dr. Fabulous, is you might start liking it too much. And then you ain't even, and then it, then it goes back to, I don't have to worry about a woman. Not saying you're going to become gay, but it's like the urge, you ain't got to be out there hunting and, and, and hollering at every big booty like she spoke about that you see, because you can just go get Lotina and Vaselina and you good. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So what you're telling me, what you're telling me, Mr. Malik, is that you feel like men like to self-pleasure more than women. Okay. Is there me um, another individual that would like to share their thoughts on that? Okay, Mr. Dr. Feel Good, your hand is up. Go right ahead. Hey, I, I say it like this. This meet Rosie All Palmer and Mary <laughs> Handy. And when I use both of them, it's a threesome. Oh my God. Oh my God. But, <laughs> oh you know, okay. So we um <laughs> men 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 typically that was funny that was funny I like that Boy, men, you, know, you, you got a way to feel good. So, you know, men typically enjoy um self pleasure more as you know we have you know the first time you go to sleep we even do it in our sleep rub it against the sheet wet dreams <laughs> nocturnal emissions it happens so. We like that feeling, and we're gonna try to replicate it. Now, that doesn't mean afterwards we ain't feeling dirty, but when we were young, you know, when you're a young, you're a teenager, you know, you, you, you fapping more than a, you know, or I, I like to say pulling the flesh rip cord, like you are airborne ranger or something. But I'm sure, I'm sure, 
women like it too because sometimes they just don't feel like dealing with a person so they go to a place or a thing but men men probably enjoy it a little bit more well, I thank you for your answer. Boy, I tell you, that vivid imagination, the sheets is what got me. The sheets. I'm going to slide right on over. I see Anson has his hand up. Come on and give me what you got, Anson. I would say women do. In you my, say women? In, yeah, throughout my history, I, 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 I've seen uh, too many women brag about they toys. You know, <laughs> You know, y'all have y'all have something called passion parties. I never heard that until a woman told me. They heard, they host passion parties where they sell dildos and vibrators and all kinds of self pleasing things mm. to women. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> I, I I would say that women enjoy it more because I I mean I've seen several women show off their vibrators to me. Mm. And I'm trying to get something. I'm like, what, what are you doing? You pull oh, out your con there underneath your mattress. Like, what you expect me to do with that? <laughs> Did you say she pulled the con air from underneath <laughs> the mattress? Yep. It, oh, my goodness. Okay. What, what, is, what, is, a, what is a con air? Is that like a leaf blower? What is, what is that? Is that like the heavy duty one? That's a massager. Oh, okay. Okay. I, they, knew they, they knew things were well, the wrong. <laughs> oh, he had a rose. <laughs> Someone is saying it. something. I'll put it in the spot, yeah. Okay, go right ahead. Can you hear us? I think she was speaking to someone else. Okay, okay. My apologies. Are there any ladies that would like to respond to this question? Okay. Go well, on. I, I would like to piggyback off of what Anson just said. Um, people have be, made a lot of money. Well, to answer the question, I think that women like it more because there are more aids that are available to women than there are to men. And like the young lady from uh, the Real Housewives of Atlanta, Candy, Bedroom Candy, she had she's made more off of that venture than her entire entertainment career. OK. 10, 11, right? 10, 11. I'm going to mute her. OK. OK. She's made more off of the the, the, the sexual venture than she has off of her entire entertainment career. So that's just an indicator that when she's catering to the female audience, she's selling those products and it's probably more self-pleasure when it comes to the women than men. Okay, well, I appreciate everyone's answer. I'm gonna go on to the next question, people. Listen to this. Do you think telling your partner key things that satisfy you when you're being intimate is important in a relationship. Example, if you are an orally fixated person and your partner is is not, do you discuss this with them to see if there is a moment of persuasion or is there a way to get this individual to participate? So the question is...